Um, uh, there are cultural institutions like the Housatonic Museum of Art over at Housatonic Community College. Um, there's the Stress Factory Comedy Club, Downtown Cabaret, uh, Bijou Theater that have great programming. And then there's also the event spaces like BPT Creates, or there's always something fun going on over at Berlin Out of Brewing. Um, just fun spots to go check out, and there's a very vibrant music culture downtown, so there are a lot, there are many interesting events and um, activities around. Hello everyone, thank you for tuning in to another episode here at the podcast. Today we have a special guest with us today, and she's gonna tell us a little bit about herself and the great organization that she's a part of who is responsible for doing so many great things here downtown Bridgeport. Uh, do you mind introducing yourself? Yes, thank you. My name is Lauren Coakley Vincent, and I lead the Bridgeport Downtown Special Services District. We're also known as Colorful Bridgeport. Okay, and uh, where are you from? Where did you grow up? I grew up in this area, um, you know, Fairfield County, Connecticut, and um, I moved away during college like many do and lived for about 10 years in New York City and then just really started missing home and found my way back. Oh, okay, okay. Um, can you tell us what uh, DSSD stands for and what is DSSD? Right, so Downtown Special Services District is a type of organization that exists in many cities in Connecticut and actually all across the country. They're called different things in different places, um, business improvement districts, local development corporations, or what have you. We all basically do the same thing. We keep neighborhoods clean, safe, and we promote all the wonderful businesses and activities and spaces to enjoy. Um, so really about quality of life and making a good uh, neighborhood even better and more welcoming. Okay, and what is your role uh, within DSSD? Like, what does your day-to-day -day, uh, activities Act look like? Yeah, I, well, so we're a small shop. It's uh, me and the clean team um, and our wonderful creative partners over at the Banana Land. So uh, my role is really keeping the machine running. I work with all of our various partners uh, who deliver our programs um, and, and work with our um, group of stakeholders and collaborators, uh, organizations, creatives, um, and, and the like to um, continue the work that we're doing. Now, is this a uh, department funded by the city of Brisport? No, uh, we are an independent uh, entity. Um, the property owners in downtown Bridgeport um, pay additional on top of their property tax bill, three mills, and that gets directly reinvested into the services and programs that we offer. Um, so in that sense, it is like a self-imposed tax that the property owners pay for uh, specific and direct services. So that, that comes to us to pay for our clean team, the public safety work that we do, and all of the marketing um, and promotions and events through Colorful Bridgeport. Okay. and. Uh... Speaking of Colorful Bridgeport, uh, can you tell us a little bit about that and what's the goal of Colorful Bridgeport? Thank you. The goal of Colorful Bridgeport is to um, elevate the stories uh, told by folks who are in the neighborhood. So we feel like we can tell our own stories and tell the true and positive work that's going on in the neighborhood to re revitalize downtown Bridgeport. So what you see on Colorful Bridgeport is all made locally. Um, we work with the Banana Land, it's a creative agency that's headquartered in downtown Bridgeport, and um, a, a deep bench of local creatives, um, whether they're graphic uh, artists, graphic um, designers, illustrators, videographers, photographers, um, everything that you see has been made by somebody in the city of Bridgeport. And um, and again, it's you know I'm sure everyone is aware that there's a perception of, of Bridgeport and, and maybe downtown Bridgeport um, by the outside world that's just simply not true and it's extremely outdated. And so we felt it was important to uh, raise up and support the voices of people here who are doing wonderful things and Colorful Bridgeport is, is the result of that. Now DSSD, along with Colorful Bridgeport, is doing a great job with engaging with the Bridgeport residents. Why is that so important for you guys? 
I mean, for a quality of life organization, the theory is that, you know, we should be here to serve the residents of the community. So we really want to make sure we know what they want, uh, what their concerns are, opportunities they see that we might be missing in terms of some program or service we could offer. Things like um, Skateport, for example. A Bridgeport resident came up with this wonderful concept of roller skating in public spaces and brought it to DSSD um, as an opportunity for partnership. And it's just been wonderful. For the last three years, there have just been so much growth in, in the events and activities in that in that space. So oh. That's just one example of many. So. Okay. So um, in my mind, I feel like the whole art scene has been the catalyst of bringing life back into downtown Bridgeport. Um, would you agree with that? And yes. my second question would be, um, with the great job that you guys are doing so far downtown Bridgeport, is there any plans to perhaps slowly start to expand outside of downtown Bridgeport? Oh, great question. So I would, to your first question, yes, the the creatives are leading the change in the city. Um, we noticed uh, that not only are there incredibly talented individuals in Bridgeport, there are a lot of them. So there are six different studio spaces. There is affordable housing dedicated for the arts community. Um, there's a wonderful uh, group out of City Lights Gallery that ho hosts the Bridgeport Art Trail every year to bring more and more people into the city to enjoy all of the arts and culture. Um, so we realized this is really what, you know, it's our great competitive advantage, if you will, this, this creative community. So that's what we started to um, explore and highlight and emphasize as we continue to promote um, promote the city, the downtown's advancement. And also I would say too, um, I don't know if this is unique to Bridgeport, but just the, the diversity of the creative community here. It's all types of disciplines, backgrounds, ethnicities. Um, you get a lot of different uh, perspectives and, and range uh, within the, the deep community here. So it gave us a lot to work with as well. Um, so yeah, I would think that would be why we really um, emphasized the creative community. Um, and your second question was about um, expanding our services. So the way that DSSDs work, whether it's a DSSD or a business improvement district or wherever you are, whatever you call yourself, they're all geographically bound to a specific geography um, because property owners pay extra on their property tax bill so that is bound by where those properties are located. So the services of DSSD can theoretically go anywhere, you know, but it's the group of property owners that have to decide to form one. So it would be wonderful if there were more DSSDs in Bridgeport, um, but those groupings of, of property owners would have to say, yes, we want to tax ourselves extra and we want to, we want to monitor services in a given area. So um, while we have to stay downtown, uh, uh, the Bridgeport DSSD has to stay downtown, it'd be great to see more uh, show up around the area. Okay, and so besides the great artwork that's on display here downtown Bridgeport and the, uh, the team who keeps downtown Bridgeport clean, who does a wonderful job, do you guys work closely with the local business and potentially future business that want to come downtown? One thing I wanted to pick up on what you said was the connection between uh, the creative community and our clean team. Um, so we recently partnered with the city's Office of Economic Development to produce 32 uh, works of public art around the downtown. 84% um, of those artists were either Bridgeport-based um, minority or uh, uh, women artists in the area. And we were really proud of that. It was a great investment in the local arts community. And what we're finding is that the, the unintended positive outcome of that is um, there's a drop in graffiti. You know, our clean team is appreciative <laughs> that there's a little bit less work to do and the neighborhood looks beautiful and was made beautiful by local artists. The, um, you asked me if uh, we work with the local businesses either to recruit new businesses um, or su provide support to the businesses that exist in the neighborhood. Um, and so we do work with the brokers and the property owners to make sure that they have uh, informational materials that are useful as they're trying to bring in tenants. We create, uh, convene conversations between brokers and property owners so they're, you know, some level of understanding of like what would go well next to each other in terms of the types of tenants in the neighborhood. Um, and then we provide uh, resources, um, make 
available information about free uh, technical assistance or educational workshops for businesses. And then of course, promotion on Colorful Bridgeport. We featured, um, we, we try to feature everybody at least once, but we featured almost all of the uh, businesses downtown in either an exclusive video or some component of our, our marketing campaigns. So did you think that these murals would have such a big impact on Bridgeport, downtown Bridgeport? Yeah, I, I, I did. I did. I, I, I would be lying if I said I didn't. Um, I did think that uh, knowing the creatives who are here living and working, um, I just I knew the talent that we had and just was very excited that there was an opportunity for that talent to make their work known to the public. Um, so I, I, I knew that that alone would be dramatic and, and wildly impressive. And I would say, um, you know, it's so exciting to see other people really appreciate um, and come to know the area for such a positive reason. So um, speaking of providing um, information and resources, I went onto your, uh, the website, infobridgeport.com. It's a great, great website. If you want to know what's yeah. going on down <laughs> Bridgeport, go to that website. And so I also seen on the website, it says uh, downtown Bridgeport radiates with diversity from arts, events, eats, music, and shops. Do you believe that this is the, the stepping stone to bringing more major developments to downtown Bridgeport? I do. I think the, the community, the vibe, the neighborhood attracts um, growth. It, it attracts people who want to bring more residential spaces, that want to locate their businesses downtown to create a good uh, quality of life for their employees. I think, you know, it's all about creating a sense of place and wanting to be in that place. So we, all of the work of, of Colorful Bridgeport and certainly of the clean team is toward that end of making this a desirable destination. Okay. And if someone wanted to come and hang out downtown for a day or two, yes. what would you su suggest that they do? Oh man, there's so many, depends on what time of year, I will say, <laughs> but there's so many great places. Um, uh, there are cultural institutions like the Housatonic Museum of Art over at Housatonic Community College. Um, there's the Stress Factory Comedy Club, Downtown Cabaret, uh, Bijou Theater that have great programming. And then there's also the event spaces like BPT Creates, or there's always something fun going on over at Berlinetta Brewing. Um, just fun spots to go check out, and there's a very vibrant music culture downtown, so there are a lot, there are many interesting events and um, activities around around music culture and, and live poetry as well. Um, so it just sort of depends on what your flavor is. And then there's, of course, speaking of flavors, there are wonderful restaurants in the neighborhood um, from 29 Markle to Ralph and Rich to Joseph's Steakhouse, um, El Poblito if you like Colombian food, Eat Noodle if you're into Asian fusion. There's so many different types of cuisines you know, I can go on and on. There, there are, um, you know, Miss Selma Soul Food is an institution. So many great spots. Um, and, and also, if you're in, into more of a nightlife scene, um, in the city and Bank Sports and Rum and Tequila are super fun places to go have a great night out. Okay. And what could, what can the people of Brisport expect from DSSD in 2024? We'll be doing more and more, I should say. Um, we are hosting more events downtown. We're partnering with more groups that want to bring their communities to the neighborhood. Um, we're looking forward to many new businesses opening uh, soon along Main Street and along Fairfield Avenue. Um, more on that to come. And there will be a few more installations of public art in the works. We have about five or six sites that we just didn't have the time to wrap up last year. Um, so those are on the way. And, and um, until March 15th, I think, um, artists who are interested can submit their applications on engage.bridgeportct.gov um, for those opportunities. So we're looking forward to more and more in 2024. One last question. What's the most enjoyable part of your job? The most enjoyable, without a question, the most enjoyable part of my job is the people that I get to work with. I, there's so many between the creative community I get to work with on the public art projects to all of the wonderful individuals who are involved in our program committees. We have three program committees, um, special events and marketing, who help us figure out what to do in terms of 
colorful Bridgeport things, um, our physical conditions crew that uh, makes sure we have beautiful native pollinator plants all around the neighborhood in the springtime um, and throughout the year. And then our public safety committee, which works very closely with the police department to make sure that downtown Bridgeport is a safe place for people to enjoy. Um, so all of the folks I get to, and on our board of commissioners, um, other property owners, you know, get involved in the work. And, and so, it's, you know, it's all the people that we get to work with on a daily basis that really brings joy. Um, there's so many wonderful people to meet and know in this neighborhood, so. Now, are you yourself a creative person? I think, I like to be around creative people. I cannot really draw much more than a stick figure, but I do appreciate um, creative space, creative thinking, creative dialogue. Um, so I think that's more of my my realm of you know facilitating uh, moments and, and interactions. Okay, and if people want to. Uh find out more about downtown Bridgeport and what's going on in upcoming events, how can they uh, follow you? Great, so if they want to follow Colorful Bridgeport on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn, you can find us there. And also on our website, colorfulbridgeport.com, if you click on our newsletter link, every week we send out a what's happening in downtown Bridgeport events for the week and, and beyond. Um, so it's a good way to stay in touch. And then there's also um, the second Wednesday of every month at 4 p.m., we have our monthly board meetings. And they're open to the public and anyone is welcome to attend and, and learn more about what's going on downtown and what's going on with the DSSD. They, we hold them right in the DSSD office. That's 938 Broad Street. We're right across from the um, downtown library. So come see us there. All right, Lauren, I'd like to thank you for taking time out your busy schedule to talk about the great things that you and DSSD along with your team are doing here downtown Bridgeport. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the opportunity and I just love the portcast and everything that you're doing to spread the word about Bridgeport. So thank you.